Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Deputy Commandant for Information, Lieutenant General Matthew G. Glaber, welcome to today's ceremony in which Brigadier General David C. Walsh will relinquish command of Marine Corps Systems Command to Brigadier General Tamara L. Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party. Please remain standing for the invocation which will be delivered by Lieutenant Brandon D. Green, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal and most merciful God, whose mighty power causes nations to tremble, we gather this morning to recognize the transfer of command between General David C. Walsh and General Tamara L. Campbell. We first offer you thanks for our United States Marine Corps the United States Marine Corps that represents the strongest, the most agile, the most lethal fighting force on this earth. For over 248 years, the Marine Corps has been slaying bodies and not apologizing for it. Because from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, in the air and on land and sea, every single United States Marine that has ever proudly worn the uniform has demonstrated the grace of a warrior and the spirit of a fighter. And so it is on this great day we observe this change of command between two great Marines. We ask that General Walsh would be blessed for his commitment to excellence and for his service and instinct to lead. We ask that your glory would rest upon General Campbell and that she would be favored because she continuously looks to you. Now, might we all be encouraged by the words found in Scripture that remind us that the Lord will indeed be our refuge and our great defender, because what we ultimately know is that heaven's gates are guarded by those that are steeped in courage, ingrained in valor, and fortified with honor and patriotism, for they are indeed proud United States Marines. In your victorious name, we pray together. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. March on the colors!
Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to welcome you to today's ceremony. The Deputy Commandant for Information, Lieutenant General Matthew V. Gilliam. Please stand by for honors to Lieutenant General Blake. Three, dead. Oh. Taking her position in the reviewing area is Brigadier General Tamara L. Campbell. Sergeant Major, deliver the colors to the commander. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Brigadier General Walsh. And by accepting the colors, Brigadier General Campbell accepts command and confirms her total commitment to the Marines, sailors, and acquisition professionals that she will command. Sergeant Major Dorsey is delivering the colors to the commanding officer, Brigadier General Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the passing of the colors. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General David C. Walsh, subject, change of command, effective 10 13 June 2024, you stand relieved of all duties as the Commander, Marine Corps Systems Command. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General Tamara L. Campbell, subject, change of command, effective 10 13 June 2024. You will assume command as the Commander of Marine Corps Systems Command. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Marine Corps Systems Command, Brigadier General Tamara L. Campbell, 
We stand by for honors to Brigadier General Campbell. Commandant for Information, Lieutenant General Matthew G. Glavy. Okay, I think I'm live, maybe not, maybe. Check one, two. All right. Uh, I really wanted to start by getting my best Sergeant Major, Major Dorsey going on. If you haven't seen him in front of Marines, it's amazing. And he starts with this impassionate uh, uh, de declaration of his love for them, literally and figuratively. Sorry, Major, I, I can't do it because I'm not good enough, but I do love you, my friend, and thanks for everything you've done to put this together. Uh, Angus and Luke and Tamara and Errol just, and Jonathan and Jordan and Justin, I think I got that right, and your family, your parents, uh, thank you. This, this is an incredible honor to be here today. Uh, it's obviously a monumental occasion. Obviously, what happens to the Marine Corps doesn't happen to the Marine Corps. So much of it starts right here. So it's appropriate that we have a who's who of guests here today. Secretary Gertin, sir, it's, uh, it's great having you. Maz, always special. And, and General Glenn, uh, my running mate, General Sharadi, General Gluck it's, uh, as well. And of course, we've got Chick and Rush and Beast. Who comes up with these names? Uh, and the Thunder, great seeing you, sir. And, uh, and so I saw General Reese out here somewhere. Anyway, just a great crowd. It's almost like being on a Friday night out at the out at the common out at the barracks uh, in the Commandant's Garden with all the uh, uh, really important people uh, that, that are here today. So thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for making uh, this special. Angus, you did it, man. Twenty-five years in naval aviation in the fleet at Nav Air, and what do they do? We make you a general officer, and we put you in the middle of of ground pounder land, right? Right in the middle of the mag tap, right in the middle of the main effort of the Marine Corps. And brother, you, you have you have thrived. Uh, what you have done to make force design a real thing, how you have changed this organization to to move as fast as as possible, really is, is a testimony to your leadership. And I think probably the catalyst for your leadership is your time at PMA. 226. I know everybody knows what PMA 226 is, or if you don't, I'll, I'll tell you, of course, it's, it was the program office of the le legendary CH-46 battle throne. So that's where he got his start, and that's why he is moving up so fast and going over to Nav Air to be PEOA. But brother, well done. Uh, this is one of the toughest jobs in the Marine Corps. Angus doesn't have one boss. Should be off. He was right there. Secretary Curtin, he has many, many bosses. Uh, a lot of them are three stars. A lot of them work up at the Pentagon or work here in Quantico, and all of them make sure they know what they're thinking. And uh, you have handled it so well, my friend. You have been a professional throughout, but that's not for the faint of heart. And uh, my heartfelt gratitude. Thank you. Tamara, wow. If we could grow and start from the beginning and build the person that we want to command this organization someday to truly begin with the end in mind, it would be you, right? From the start, we may be lucky, may be good, may be both, uh, was on a track almost destiny to be here today to sit in that seat. From her time in the fleet, to her time at Marine Corps Systems Command, to her time at Nav Air, don't forget your time in the Pentagon, 
that could be the most important time uh, that, that you have had. Uh, and her time at Naval Postgraduate School has set her up for this moment. A note on Naval Postgraduate School, since you are an alum and you will be carrying the flame forward. As I've run around the Marine Corps in the middle of this thing we call force design, all the catalysts, all the accelerants that I've noted, there seems to be a common denominator to them all. In the middle of it, there's probably a Navy postgraduate school graduate. And whether it's an MNRA working for Jim Glenn, or at McTissa working for Genghis and now you, or at McWill at the Warfighting Lab, or up at Mar 4 Cyber, wherever there was accelerant, something happened faster than the norm, they, they were in the middle of it. Now it's your turn to truly carry the flame on their behalf. The Marine Corps has done an exceptional job in screening and slating them and sending them to that so important school. And then on the backside, putting them in the right place to do all this wonderful stuff. Uh, and it has been truly wonderful. If I have a piece of advice for you tomorrow, uh, you're getting ready to be in the midst of this whirlwind we call change. And it's almost cliche at this point, but I would, I would equate it to this. The change you're going to experience is similar to a roller coaster ride. Literally and figuratively. There's two ways to look at it. One is you clench your teeth and you fight it and you brace up and you can't wait for it to be over. Or, 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 right, you hoot and you holler and you scream and you yell and you enjoy every turn and curve because the change that we're talking about that is so different than the past happens at 2.99 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Pretty fast. That's the change we're talking about. That's the world we live in right now, and that's the battlefield that we're watching today. And again, we have chosen wisely, and you are going to excel, my friend. I'll leave where I started and try to do my best, Sergeant Major Dorsey. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Love you all. Semper Fidelis, and God bless. Thank you. All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Generals, admirals, secretary, senior executives, Marine Corps Systems Command team, thank you all for being here. General Clavey, thanks for the, uh, for the comments. Um, like you said, I had no clue uh, getting into SISCOM here, what it was going to involve, but a big chunk of it is DCI work. And, where we stand at the Marine Corps, where our site's advantage is decision making, training of our Marines to be good decision makers, combined with the information that comes out of the DCI capability, really is the secret sauce that makes our Marine Corps work. So, thanks, sir. Thanks for all of the PCs and the uh, three stars who have been such an important part of what we've done here the last couple of years. Uh, I do get a lot of guidance, I get a lot of uh, a lot of help, and it all is truly helpful in helping me produce capability for our Marines. So, Thank you. All right, so it's Marine Corps Systems Command. We buy stuff, we make stuff, we deliver stuff to the fleet, we sustain it for our Marines. But that's not what I'll talk about. I could talk all day about the capabilities that our team delivers to our Marines. And it is essential to our force design capabilities and making sure our Marines remain lethal and survival on battlefield. But that's not what makes Marine Corps Systems Command so effective. Our, our key capability is our people. That's what I'm talking about today. So uh, I know it's a little warm, but I'm going to go through a list of folks that I want to thank and end with our most important folks. So starting off, uh, Color Guard fan, thank you. It really does make the celebration a uh, celebration when you have Color Guard come down from the barracks. Awesome, as always, and the band is a Thank you so much for being here. For the folks in the team that. <laughs> The team that helped organize, Sergeant Major Dorsey has been out here for weeks making sure it's went perfectly. Thank you, Sergeant Major, wherever you are, there you are, standing back, still making sure things working. Uh, OPAC team, our Marines and Systems Command, great job. The weather cooperated, and we're out here enjoying a wonderful day celebrating Marine Corps Systems Command. To our partners, if uh, you've been in the command, been around the command, I talk about people's, part people's partnerships and programs. We've got wide range of our partners here in the audience today. We have a couple of our international partners, 
saw Matt Churchward out here somewhere. There he is back in the corner. I think we got uh, that girl Sanish here from CDD as well. We could not do what we do here without the partnership uh, with our international partners. We're going to fight together out there around the world, and we're going to work on it together here. We've got the capabilities here together, so we're ready for that fight when it comes to our partners. Another key partner out there, our industry partners. We've got a lot of representation from industry. Again, we can't do what we do and provide those capabilities for our Marines without our industry partners. We spend a lot of time working with them. I really do appreciate your collaboration and your partnership to make sure our Marines get what they need. My leadership secretary, Curtin, Secretary Stephanie, before him, uh, Commandant, all the three stars, Deputy Commandants, they provided, like I said, great guidance to me, great support, and allowed me to do my job here at Systems Command, make sure our, our stuff gets out to our Marines. I've got a lot of mentors, a lot of mentors out there in the audience today, General Maggio being fine among them. Thanks for being here. I wouldn't be here where I am today. I would not be uh, the leader I am today without their guidance over 25 years worth of acquisition time. Even before that, with me, uh, the mentors have made such a, an enormous difference in my life. So thank you, Kurt. Thank you all. You got a few former commanders here, thank you for setting the stage for what SISCOM is today. Without your leadership prior to years, we would not be where we need to be today. So General Kelly out there, General Pasadian, I think you might have a few others out there. Thanks for coming tonight. Celebrate this. Yeah. I had a chance to talk to the staff here a little bit yesterday, but I just want to, again, reiterate the key role they play in the SISCOM. As the commander, we're focused up and out a lot. We set strategy, we set priorities, but it's the staff here, the colonels, we're the program managers, the senior executives, our directors, who really make things go every day and make sure that we're doing our job and provide those capabilities. So thank you for all the work you've done, all the support you provide to me and to our needs. All right, in the front office staff, uh, you'll see a trend here as I start talking. I've gone through a lot of front office staff. I don't think that's because of me. They can tell me otherwise, but we've gone through three chiefs, three EDs, a couple of sergeant major, three aides, and I just want to touch on all of them uh, each individually. Chiefs Kirk Mullins, we had Lick Licklider, now Ross Mata. They really make sure that the that the uh, the uh, command runs. That's the chief's job. It's the hardest job in the in the command, and they have all done it differently but well. And they make sure I have the time to go do what I need to do, setting the priorities of the organization and leading outside. So thank you all for what you've done as chief of staff. Uh, Sergeant Major. So Sergeant Major Goodyear out there somewhere. There he is. Sergeant Major Goodyear, Sergeant Major Dorsey, my partner in command. Couldn't have done it without you. We, it's a unique command here. So Sergeant Major doesn't come in here with any acquisition experience whatsoever. And both of them have jumped in and learned what they can about acquisition. That's not what I asked them to do. I don't ask them to be acquisition oriented. I asked them to be leaders for our junior Marines and our Marines in the command. And I felt both of them as they came in. We're kind of a unique command with Marines spread out all over the place, and, you know, working alongside our amazing civilians and uh, some of, a lot of Marine veterans. But they're out there a lot of cases alone and unafraid in these uh, civilian officers. I charge them with making sure they know they're part of a Marine Corps command, that they are, they are Marines, serving Marines, they're part of a command. So I ask them to do that. The other thing I ask them to do is as we go and travel around the fleet, talk to the Marines about what the Marine Corps Assistance Command does. I ask him to go to the Sergeant Majors, to the Junior Marines, let them know that they have hundreds of Marines here at CISCOM working for them. So if they've got a problem with the capability, they need, a, they need help, they know who to call here at Marine Corps Assistance Command. And both of them have done great at that. In addition to raising morale, keeping the love in it for both of them, your Assistance Command, and uh, it's really just been a pleasure as friends, and as a fellow Marine, that goes All right, and then uh, aid. So I've had uh, three aides. Chris Adsit, Captain Adsit, may be out here. There he is. And Chris, long hair now, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he's at Yale Law School, so he's allowed to throw his hair out now. Uh, we had Ryan Som, who's out in the fleet, leading some, uh, leading some Marines. And now it's all our BC members running around. There you go. Those of you who general officers who have had AIDS, you can't, you just can't keep your, your schedule going around. They are a key component of everything we do here. Make sure we get what we need to be, we get information we need, coordinating, all that kind of stuff. And that's really, really important. 
I've asked the aides to do a little bit more than that here at Syscom. I've asked them to sit in meetings, to learn what's going on. They're my second brain, keeping notes, keeping track of what's going on. And I use them all the time to go back and ask who was in that meeting, what was said, uh, did you provide background, you know, uh, advice, all of those things. So I've asked them to do a lot, and they've all stepped up. And it's really been a fight for all of you, uh, Chris, Michelle. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for the past eight years. It's been a blessing for years. All right. Finally, Luke, repping the family. Uh, <coughs> couldn't be here. Uh, Riley, my other son, Chris Bennett Walsh, is in Djibouti, uh, deployed right now, so he couldn't be here. So, Luke, uh, couldn't be prouder of you and Riley. Um, Mom and I uh, just graduated from the University of Maryland with a degree in information science. I was talking about the importance of information. He's going to work now there as a uh, civilian uh, federal service employee, in cyber stuff. Really, really important stuff. Super proud of you. Super proud of Riley. Love you guys. All right. Two more groups I want to talk about. First one is the Marines and the civilians of Marine Corps Systems. It's been a tremendous privilege and honor to be here for the last couple of years. I am humbled every day as I walk around. I see the dedication, commitment to our mission and our Marines. And Sergeant Major and I make the rounds to visit the needs. It's, it's, it's like I said, truly a mountain. We ask them to do a lot. We ask them to be agile, be creative in an environment that is heavily regulated. Lots of oversight. Uh, technology is moving quickly, accelerating every day. We've got a threat out there that's uh, trying to keep pace with us. That's really hard work. And every day, they are out there performing. They are out there making it work. Find professionals and making a huge difference for our Marines. And it's not just big programs that we have Marines and civilians serving on delivering stuff like theater radars and things like that. But it's really a lot of things that are behind the scenes that are really, really important. I'll, I'll just name a couple of audits. We, we had a successful audit for the Marine Corps. Systems Command, as you know, over a lot of years, had a huge part to play in that. And those Marines and those civilians out here really make a difference because we want to be able to help Congress every dollar that they appropriate for the Marine Corps going towards a capability in the hands of Marines. And the audit allows us to do that. So that's one. Presidential drawdown. We're delivering stuff to Ukraine on a regular basis. The Marines here and the civilians here at CISCOM do that. They make sure that our Ukrainian partners or Israeli partners or Taiwanese partners get what they need from our stockpiles and that work when they get there. We have a, a ton, we have dozens of special programs, highly classified programs that our Marine civilians can't talk about, but they are going to make a difference if and when we have to go fight. And our uh, folks here at CISCOM are making that difference. They're serving in those programs. That's all in service of the last one I'm talking about. That's our Marines. Our Marines and the while we're here, that's our mission to make sure they have what they need when they need it. Be lethal and survival on the battlefield. That's, I think, no command epitomizes current readiness, uh, balance with modernization better than Marine Corps System Command. We're doing modern, uh, current readiness every day. Things like uniform. If you remember a year or so ago, we didn't have uniforms on the shelves. Logcom, Syscom, we made sure that uniforms got on the shelves as basic as current readiness can be. Uniforms on Marine's back. Sergeant Major Goodyear, get out there on a sewing machine up in New Jersey, sewing uniforms. There's some lucky Marine out there with a Sergeant Major Goodyear produced cami blouse. <laughs> I tried, I broke the lady chalk, she got really disappointed, and I had to back off. But every piece of gear the Marines have out there, from their uniforms to naval strike missile to theater radars, has Marine Corps Systems Command fingerprints on. Each of you touch each piece of gear that the Marines out there in the fleet are using every day. Uh, I mentioned uniforms. It goes through naval strike missiles. So these are new capabilities that we're building right now. Nemesis. They, uh, that allow Marines to get into austere environments. They control key maritime terrain. Our charts are the joint force. And we're looking even further. That'll be out there for decades. But we're looking even further than that. With another war gaming center. This is going to allow uh, Marines to war game, experiment, See what capabilities we need to out there in 20, 30, 40 years based on what we know. And Marine Corps is providing that capability to our Marine Corps. So I, I have no doubt that Marine Corps System Command will continue to continue to form and improve under the leadership of Michelle Pan. It's now a privilege to uh, turn over command to you and my partner, Errol. There's, like John Lady said, there is no one you couldn't have. Blueprinted a better Marine State Command here. 
She has all the experience. She's managed programs at all levels. She's been with the fleet, she's been at Sistock, she's been at Navair, she's been at Pentagon, and that all helps her out. But the most key component, the thing that I gives me great confidence that she'll be successful is her passion to help other people. And I, I heard about it at a chain of command on Tuesday, raving about her passion for people. I know it to be true, and I know she's confident about that coming. Thank you all. It's been a, a, a true honor. Separate Fidelis. You want to use some notes? Hopefully, you guys can all hear me. We're up. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, good morning. Good morning. General Officer, Senior Executive, Industry Partners, Friends, Family, and Marine Corps Service. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us both online and in person here today. Lieutenant General Levy, thank you, sir, for honoring us with your presence today. I am ready to ride that roller coaster half the time. <laughs> I look forward to working with you and your team. A special thank you to all of those that worked so hard on setting up this event, as well as those participating behind the scenes to ensure that everything runs. Please join me in another party round of applause for those individuals, the bands, and the colors. <laughs> it is my distinct honor and privilege to stand before you today as I assume command of this exceptional team. I am deeply humbled by the trust and confidence placed in me to lead this outstanding team. Renowned for its innovation, dedication, and commitment to excellence in supporting our nation's defense. First and foremost, I'd like to present my heartfelt gratitude to Brigadier General Walker. Angus, for your exemplary leadership and unwavering dedication to this commander, your vision and relentless pursuit of excellence has significantly enhanced our capability and set a high standard for all of us to follow. Your legacy of innovation and agility is the foundation upon which we will continue to build. To the men and women of this command, I am profoundly aware of the critical role you play in ensuring that our Marines are provided with the best support. Your expertise, professionalism, and commitment to excellence are the cornerstone of our success. I was fortunate to begin my acquisition career here in this very building. And I am honored to again have the opportunity to serve alongside each and every one of you. And to lead such a talented and dedicated team. As we move forward, our mission remains clear. To drive innovation by leveraging new and evolving technology and delivering superior capabilities in a timely manner to our war fighters. We will continue to uphold the highest standards of integrity and excellence, ensuring that we remain agile and responsive to the ever-evolving needs of our Marines as they face the biggest threat. Our ultimate objective is to provide them with a decisive advantage so they can be most ready when our nation is ready. I am committed to fostering an environment where each of you can thrive, where your talents and contributions are recognized and valued and where your personal and professional growth is prioritized. Together, we will continue to push the boundaries of what is possible, leveraging our collective expertise to, deliver and to develop and deliver cutting-edge capabilities. To our industry partners, stakeholders, partners, and allies, your support and partnership are invaluable. We will continue to strengthen these relationships, working together to drive innovation and achieve our shared goals. To my family, friends, and loved ones, my PMA friends from Navier, my friends from CISCOM that are coming from way back, <laughs> we've come a long way. Um, you are our village. Many of you have traveled near and far to celebrate with us today, and I am so grateful. Your unwavering support and sacrifice are the foundation upon which my Errol and I are deeply grateful for your resilience and understanding and recognize that our accomplishments 
Todd Shear, which is all Jordan, Johnson, and Dustin. Thank you for your patience as your dad and I disrupted your schedule for the last few months. <laughs> there are only a few complaints about missed events, missed sporting events, missed classes, and various other things. I promise this is the last ceremony for a while. <laughs> Having gone through a retirement, a promotion, a change of command, and another change of command over the last two, two or three months, I know it's been a lot. Uh, know that we are so proud of all three of you and can't wait to see the places that you will go. I love you so soon and that. You are proud of you. Errol, thank you for your 29 years of service as well as your support and encouragement. We could not make this great family work without all the time. As you transition to your new post-retirement role, <laughs> know that we love you and appreciate you. In closing, I am immensely proud to return to this command and to lead such an extraordinary group of women. And to move forward with un as we move forward with unwavering dedication, determination, steadfast in our commitment to the mission, and inspired by the legacy of those who come to take before us. Together, we will continue to achieve greatness, have fun, and uphold the honor of this distinguished command. God bless and suffer for that. Donations are being made to the Semper Max Fund on behalf of Brigadier General Walsh and Brigadier General Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Anchors Away in the Marines hymn.